I give you a very warm welcome to our Hamilton South Quarter Wednesday Reflection and my grateful thanks go to Darian, Catherine, Helen and Maureen for their much needed support and Joanne for her encouragement, time and technical knowledge to bring this to you. Our call to worship is from Psalm 27 verses 1 and 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all the days of my life. Amen. Almighty God, we come into your holy presence, reminded of your greatness and holiness, conscious that we come into the presence of the creator and sustainer of the universe, and yet our heavenly Abba Father. God Almighty, we praise and worship you this morning. You are a God of justice and truth, a God of love who cares for each one of us. Day by day, you are with us whether at work or leisure, sad times or happy times. Father, forgive us when we disappoint you, when we let you down. Forgive our weakness, our failure to recognise when things are wrong. We thank you, Lord, that you are so willing to forgive and forget all our sins. Help us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that you speak to us through your spirit within us, inspiring us, bringing us comfort and teaching us. Help us always to be listening for your guidance and the way in which you lead us. Gracious God, we come conscious that once more you have blessed us with so many good things. You have blessed us more than we deserve. Your goodness is beyond measure. We praise you for this opportunity to worship you and to commit our lives afresh to your service. We praise you for the great love that has searched us out and enriched our lives. Open our eyes and our hearts to what you have to teach us this day. We lift this prayer to you in Jesus' name with thankful hearts. And now let us pray together saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 27. Hear the word of God. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever 
the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his most holy word. I'm pretty sure many of you are like me and talk to God often in the course of the day and it's a great comfort to know that as we do, we know he is listening and leading us in the way we should go. I personally seem to be constantly asking him to help me or someone else and sometimes I'm totally overwhelmed at how quickly he answers my call for help. It almost brings me to tears and humbles me so much. The reason why, because it makes me aware of how often I do ask, but also ashamed at how little I do for him. In my Kindle, I have a book called Grace for the Moment by Max Lucado, which contains inspirations for each day of the year. And I've taken the liberty of combining some of Max's inspirations for my reflection today and I've entitled it At Home with God. In John chapter 14 verse 23, Jesus says, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. God wants you to be your, his dwelling place. He has no interest in being a weekend getaway, or a Sunday caravan, or a summer cottage. Don't consider using God as a vacation cabin or an eventual retirement home. He wants you under his roof now and always. He wants to be your mailing address, your point of reference. He wants to be your home. For many, this is a new thought. We think of God as a deity to discuss, not a place to dwell. We think of God as a creator to call on, not a home to live in. But our Father wants to be much more. He wants to be the one in whom Acts 17 verse 28 tells us we live and move and have our being. God loves to decorate. God has to decorate. Let him live long enough in your heart and that heart will begin to change. Portraits of hurt will be replaced by landscapes of grace. Walls of anger will be demolished and shaky foundations restored. God can no more leave a life unchanged and a mother can leave her child's tears untouched. This might explain some of the discomfort in your life. Remodeling of the heart is not always pleasant and God has such high aspirations for you. He envisions a complete restoration. He won't stop until he is finished. He wants you to be just like Jesus. It's time to let God's love cover all things in your life, all secrets, all hearts, all hours of evil thoughts, all minutes of worry, the years you peddled prejudice and pride. His love will cover that. Every promise broken, drug taken, every cross wrong or harsh word, his love covers all things. So let it. 
Discover along with the psalmist, he loads me with love and mercy. So just picture a giant dump truck full of love. There you are behind it. God lifts the bed of the truck until the love starts to slide. Slowly at first, then down, 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 until you are hidden, buried, covered in his love. Hey, where are you? Someone asks. I'm here. Covered in love is your reply. What a beautiful feeling. You can talk to God because he listens. Your voice matters in heaven. He takes you very seriously. When you enter his presence, he turns to you to hear your voice. No need to fear that you will be ignored. Even if you stammer or stumble, even if what you have to say impresses no one, it impresses God and he listens. He listens to the painful plea of the elderly in the rest home. He listens to the gruff confession of the death row in it. When the addict seeks help, when the nurse seeks guidance, and when the troubled seek comfort, when the dying call for him, God listens. As we are assured in Luke 18 verse 7, God will always give what is right to his people who cry to him in the night and day and he will not be slow to answer them. Would you like to see a miracle? Well, plant a word of love, heart deep in a person's life, nurture it with a smile and a prayer, and watch what happens. An employee gets a compliment, a wife receives a bouquet of flowers, a cake is baked and carried next door, a widow is hugged, a preacher is praised. Sowing seeds of love, and peace is like sowing beans. You don't know why it works, you just know it does. Seeds are planted and topsoils of heart are pushed away, but don't forget the principle. Never underestimate the power of a seed. God calls us in this real world. He doesn't communicate by stacking stars in the heaven or reincarnating people from the grave. He's not a magician or a good luck charm or the man upstairs that I've heard say so often. He is the creator of the universe, who is right here in the thick of our day-to-day -day world, who speaks to you more than through horoscopes or zodiac papers. If you get some supernatural vision or hear some strange voice in the night, don't get too far carried away. It could be God or it could be indigestion. And you don't want to misinterpret one for the other. God speaks in our world. We just have to learn to hear him among the ordinary sounds in our lives. Once there was a man who dared God to speak. Burn the bush like you did for Moses, God, and I will follow. Collapse the walls like you did for Joshua, God, and I will fight. Still the waves like you did in Galilee, God, and I will listen. And so the man sat by a bush near a wall, close to the sea, and waited for God to speak. And God heard the man, so God answered. He sent fire, not for a bush, but for a church. He brought down a wall, not of brick, but of sin. He stilled the storm, not of the sea, but of the soul. And God waited for the man to respond. And he waited. And he waited. But because the man was looking at the bushes, not hearts, bricks and not lives, seas and not souls, he decided that God had done nothing. And finally he looked to God and asked, Have you lost your power, God? And God looked at him and said, Have you lost your hearing? It seems to me God gives a lot more grace than we'd ever imagine. We could do the same. I'm not for watering down the truth or compromising the gospel, but if a person with a pure heart calls God Father, can't I call that same man brother? If God doesn't make doctrinal perfection a requirement for family membership, should I? And if we never agree, can't we agree to disagree? If God allows me with my foibles and failures to call him Father, shouldn't I extend the same grace to others? Our gracious Father has taught us so much, and I still wonder if we are really, really listening.
We are told in Luke 18, verse 7, God will always give what is right to his people who cry to him night and day, and he will not be slow to answer them. There are stages in some people's lives when they worry about whether they will have enough money to put food on the table or to buy a new pair of shoes for one of the children. And they question, why does God wait until the money runs out? Why does he wait until the sickness has lingered? Why does he choose to wait until the other side of the grave to answer our prayers for healing? I don't know. I only know his timing is always right. I can only say he will do what is best. Though you hear nothing, he is acting. With God, there are no accidents. Every incident is intended to bring us closer to him. We're told in Romans 8 verse 14, the true children of God are those who let God's spirit lead them. And yet the Holy Spirit, although mentioned in church conversation, isn't mentioned very much outside it. I often wonder why. And when I'm part of a group, I'm quite happy to listen to the different opinions because I learn more that way. We talk about the Father, we talk about the Son, and when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we are, as I've heard it said, confused at best and frightened at worst. Confused because we've never been taught and frightened because we've been taught to be afraid. Max Lucado sympathizes this by saying, the Holy Spirit is the presence of God in our lives, carrying on the work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit helps us in three directions. Inwardly, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24, by granting us the fruits of the Spirit. Upwardly, in Romans 8, verse 26, by praying for us. And outwardly, in Romans 5, verse 5, by pouring God's love into our hearts. So there you have it. We have been given all the tools for the job and the Holy Spirit is walking beside us. So let's start using them to spread God's love around. And when we're finished for the day, we can return home knowing God's precious love and welcome is always waiting. What more could you wish for? Amen. One Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 instructs us to pray for others. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Let us join in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we bring our prayers for others. Let us first bring to you our thanks. Thank you, loving Father, for all the blessings you have given us especially during the strange times of the pandemic. We thank you for Lynette and all her hard work, and we pray a blessing on her that she may be feel refreshed while she takes a short break. We thank you for helping give the skills to Joanne and Lynette that we might be fed through technology, giving us access to services, prayer times, coffee mornings, quizzes and the ability to study the God question together, all by the power of Zoom and YouTube. Be with Joanne and Louise, our session clerks, as they study the directives from the Church of Scotland and share that information with the Kirk sessions. We pray for our Kirk sessions as they keep in touch with members of our congregations and we all pray for patience and guidance as we wait for the time when we can meet together again in our churches safely, in Hamilton South and Quarter. Most loving God, we bring before you our prayers for others. We know, Father, that this pandemic is still a threat to life and health. Our prayer is that we may take a safe course as restrictions ease. Those in the front line have been battling this virus for months and many are battle weary. We ask for them to be restored so they can carry on using their skills for others. We thank you, Father, for all those in the front line of care who have gone above and beyond to bring peace to those and love to those in their care. We think of all staff in hospitals, no matter their role, who have worked tirelessly 
and we think of carers in homes and the community who have become the link between an individual resident and their families. We pray for those we know who are unwell at this time, whether in their own home, in a care home or in hospital. Give them peace, Lord, and we pray for healing. We perhaps don't know individual needs, Father, but you do. We pray for your comforting arm around them. For those waiting for treatments that have been paused due to COVID-19, we pray that services will be able to resume and the wait for healing can be granted. And we also pray for those who are recovering from operations and we pray for their continued healing. We also remember in our prayer those who have faced bereavement, whether due to the pandemic or other illnesses. Give those families still grieving your new hope for the future, Lord, and comfort them in the memories that they shared with their loved one. We remember today, especially all schools opening in Scotland. May young folk find the care and attention they have missed as they continue in their studies. Many children need the routine of school to bring sense into their lives. Help our school staff to endeavour to meet those needs required. Keep staff and pupils safe from this virus so that parents may return to work without worry for their children. For having those left school and moving on to the next stage of their lives, whether it be college, university or work, we pray that they will find their path guided by you. And we think of our church communities and pray a blessing on the care that has sprung up, showing love to others. And we pray that this new way of life will continue to be shown in lives of caring to others long after the pandemic has gone. We bring these prayers in Jesus' name to you. Amen.